thank you so much for all of your many blessings and your kindness, your love, and everything that you have shown us, everything that you have given us. Thank you for another chance to be in the house of prayer. We ask right now, as always, God, for a fresh anointing of thy spirit, that we can take this, thy word, and rightly divide it, and part it to us an understanding that will help us to be who you are calling us to be. Bless each and every person that is here, those that may be on their way, give them traveling grace. Bless those who may be watching across various platforms, and Lord, even bless those who feel that there is no need for Bible study. Allow them to understand, Lord, that if we don't study your word, there's no way we can know you. It's in the powerful, precious name of Jesus the Christ we pray, and we all say it together, amen. amen. We thank God for this journey. We thank God for each and every one of you who makes up our uh, congregation tonight as we continue um, our walk through um, the parables that Jesus uh, used to teach um, God's words to those people who were listening to him. We're going to go tonight to Mark chapter 4, looking at three verses, verse 30, 31, and 30. Two. And this is the parable of the mustard seed, or the mustard seed parable. And we're going to uh, try to see what we can glean from, um, from these scriptures tonight um, as it relates to who we are um, in the kingdom of God and what our responsibility is as it relates to being in God's kingdom. So we're going to look at uh, Mark chapter 9, verses uh, 30 uh, through 32 um, and see what the Lord uh, has to say to us uh, tonight regarding the mustard seed parable. Our, our main thought uh, next, our main thought is going to be the same that we used last week. Something to think about. Think about this. What is the kingdom of God? What is the kingdom of God? Where is the kingdom of God? Who is in the kingdom of of God. What is the kingdom of God? Where is the kingdom of God? And who is in the kingdom of God? The kingdom of God is the people of God do, doing the will of God on earth. Every day is a day that the believer adds to the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is a work in Progress. Somebody say that with me. The kingdom of God is a work in progress. Say it again. The kingdom of God is a work in progress. It is never complete, but it's always being completed. It is never complete, but it's always being completed. The believer must understand that we are construction workers who are tasked with building God's kingdom. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. You and I are seeds planted for the specific purpose of working in and on God's kingdom. When is your Christianity complete on earth? Never. When do you complete being the Christian that God created you to be on earth? Never. It's never complete, but it's always being completed. I'm never complete, but I'm always being Completed. I, 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 I'll never on this side get to completion, but I'm working towards, walking towards, loving towards, living towards, helping towards, building towards being a complete product. When can your Christianity retire? When can you? Uh, Cash in your Christianity and Social Security. When you go 
to the other side, right? But while you're here, the work is always going on. We're always being a part of the kingdom of God. How is your work? If God was to give us a grade on our work, what would our grade be? How is your work? So let's get into this. Let's get into this. Man, we won't be long. We got three, four scriptures. We won't be long. Caleb said, yeah, daddy, right. <laughs> Somebody read verse 30. Next. Verse 30. What does it say? Jesus says, Jesus says, how can I describe the kingdom of God? What story should I use to illustrate it? How can I describe the kingdom of God in such a way that these people who are listening to me can understand what it means, what the kingdom of God means, what the kingdom of God is, and what is my part in the kingdom of God. Jesus asked that question. How can I describe the kingdom of God? Next. Describing God's kingdom. Describe God's kingdom. Somebody just, to, just just give me a description word for what you would say if someone was to come to you on the street and say, describe to me, what do you mean thy kingdom come? We pray it every Sunday. But what do you mean when you pray that prayer? What are you asking God really when you pray that prayer and believe that prayer? Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth. What is God's kingdom to you? Being upright? Being right? And upright? What is God's kingdom to you? Compassion? Love? Treat others? Service towards others? All of these are good descriptions of God's kingdom, but do they, do they encompass everything about God's kingdom? Don't even begin to scratch the surface, does it? My challenge to you every day from this Wednesday to next Wednesday, the Lord allows us to live. Every day, wake up and say, Lord, help me be part of your kingdom. And show me what that really means. Yes, sir.
kingdom. Next, how does God's kingdom build you? What is God's kingdom to you? What part do you play in God's kingdom? How do you build God's kingdom? How does God's kingdom build you? Jesus says, how can I explain the kingdom of God to these people? What story should I use to illustrate it? I have their attention. I'm trying to get them to understand. I want to make the most of my opportunity to, to, to make a difference in the lives of somebody else. How often do we miss our opportunity? to make a difference in the lives of people we meet. How often does God strategically put us in the right place in front of the right people who need a word of wisdom, a word of love, a word of encouragement, a smile, a pat on the back, a hug, a you can make it. to show God's kingdom and when we show God's kingdom Karen we grow God's kingdom when we show God's kingdom we grow God's kingdom when we invite someone to be a part of God's kingdom and they come to be kingdom workers we grow God's kingdom oftentimes we miss the opportunity to grow God's kingdom because the people that need to be a part of God's kingdom don't look like people who should be a part of God's kingdom. Aren't you glad that God did not disqualify you for his kingdom based on what you did not have? Aren't you grateful that God did not disqualify you from his kingdom based on the mistakes that you made? based on the things that you did wrong, based on the way that you treated somebody else. Is there anybody in here that's grateful for forgiveness? Forgive my debts as I forgive my debtors. We don't even know what we're praying when we pray that. Because what we're saying, Sister Hayden, when we pray that, is we're saying, Lord, if I don't forgive them, don't forgive me. Forgive my debts as I forgive my debtors. Watch this. Forgiveness doesn't start with somebody forgiving you. Forgiveness, forgiveness starts with you forgiving somebody. I saw somewhere the other day, forgiveness is what lets a, lets a prisoner free and then you realize you were the prisoner. How does it build you? How many people can say you are better because of your relationship with God? You are better because you are in the kingdom building business. You are better because God is allowing you to be a part of his kingdom here on earth. You are better. You're not what you, you, well, you're not what you should be, but thanks God you ain't what you used to be. Somebody need to holler, I'm better. I still got a ways to go, but I'm better. Still got some junk and some mess, but I'm better. Got my tool belt on. I came to construct God's kingdom today. And every day that I'm working on God's kingdom, it's making me better. Giving people God doesn't just bless them. It blesses you. When you see, it's not just blessing you. It's bless not just blessing them. It's blessing you. When you stand at that door and smile at people, it's not just blessing them, it's blessing you. Helping you to be better. Challenging you to do more. Anybody 
ever got so good with God, you say, God, I want some more. Lord, what else can I do? Well, Lord, where else can I go? Lord, what else can I be a part of? To be a blessing to you, which will inevitably be a blessing to me. Describe God's kingdom. Your homework for the next seven days is every day from this Wednesday to next Wednesday. If God lets us live, you need to bring a sheet of notebook paper in here for the next, with the next seven days with one word uh, with your definition of what God's kingdom is. And it can be a long definition, it can be one word. And see how what you believe God's kingdom is evolves. I used to think the kingdom of God was coming to church. Shouting, running around the building. That's what I used to think the kingdom of God was, but I found out it's way more to it than that. Because I am of the opinion that God don't really watch us much at church because God knows we know how to have church. God watches us when we leave church to see if we was playing in church or if we are real to the Christians that we profess to be. Right? Jesus says, Brother Gaskin, what, what example? How can I describe the kingdom of God? What story should I use to illustrate? I found that interesting. Jesus, it looks like, was asking because he was really trying to figure it out himself, but he already he already knew. I believe what he was doing was he was asking that question rhetorically so that those who were listening could really start thinking about really what is the kingdom of God? What can I compare the kingdom of God to? Then Jesus said, I know what it is. That's what I love about it. He said, I, 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 I know what it is. What does it say in verse 31 and 32? Next. There you go, take it. He said the kingdom it is. What it what is it is? What is it? The kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is like a mustard seed planted in the ground. It is the smallest of all seeds. But it the largest of all plants. It grows long branches and birds can make nests in the shade.
the goodness of the ground. The goodness of the ground. Watch this. He tells us that the seed is planted small. Next. The seed is planted small. The seed is not planted as it will be. It's planted as it is. On the way to what it will be. It's small, but it's got big in it. You missed that. It's small, but it has big in it. Next, although it is small on the outside, its potential is huge on the inside. He told you, when it comes up, it's the biggest of all the plants. So big that the branches grow out so long that the birds can come and make nests and sit in the shade. Although it is small on the outside, its potential is huge on the inside. That's why the devil doesn't want you to reach your potential because he knows your potential is bigger than what you are. And a lot of people can't get excited about their potential because all they can do is look at where they are and see their smallness. But don't you know God can do some big things with some small stuff? Read your Bible. Every time Jesus did something, he did something with something that didn't look like he could do something with it. He always took it and multiplied it and made it more. He made it greater. Somebody holler, I can be greater. That there's greater in me. The Bible says greater is in me than he that is in the world. And there's something in me. There's a seed in me that has huge potential. That's why the devil is always trying to mess with you because the devil doesn't want you to realize your potential. He wants you to look at what you perceive as your problem. But I'm little. But I'm little. But I'm little. What do you mean I'm little? I come from the wrong place. I'm little. I don't have the right stuff. I'm little. I don't have the right pedigree, I'm little. I didn't go to the fanciest institutions, I'm little. I don't know the biggest words, I don't have the best job, I'm little. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't grow up with my mama and my daddy, I'm little. Big mama raised me, I'm little. I'm not well educated, I'm little. You see how often you find what's wrong with you when God says I planted a seed on the inside of you that is full of potential and you never make it to your potential because you're always focused on what you perceive to be your problem. Ah, all right, sir. But the kingdom of God lets me know that there's something on the inside of me that's bigger than everything that's on the outside of me. Although it is small on the outside, this potential is huge on the inside. Somebody talk, somebody holler, I have potential. I have power. I have potential. God made me with everything that I need. And the Bible says, the Bible says, in verse number 30, it says, it is planted in the ground. Somebody hollered the ground. Somebody hollered the dirt. Next, what you go grow through, dirt, prepares you for where you're going to, destiny. The dirt prepares you for your destiny. The destiny of the seed was to always be a huge tree. But the seed would never be a huge tree if it didn't go through the dirt. And the dirt requires for it to be buried, for it to be in a dark place, for it to be alone, for it to be lonely, for it to be by itself, for it to seem like it's suffering, for it to seem like it's not going to come out, for it to seem like it is no longer valid, no longer alive. But no, Lord, the Lord lets you go through the dirt, not to kill you, but to develop you. So when you come out of the dirt, you will be the tree that he planted you to be. That's why you ought to give God praise when you're going through the dirt, because the dirt is preparing you for your destiny. The dirt is
is preparing you for your destiny. The dirt is preparing you for what God is calling you to be. The, 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 the sower puts the seed in the dirt. Watch this. Not for the seed to stay in the dirt, but for the seed to come out of the dirt. Somebody holler, I'm going to come out the dirt. Sooner or later, I'm going to come out the dirt because if the dirt was going to kill me, I would already be dead. Sooner or later, I'm going to come out the dirt because if the dirt was going to stop me from being who God is calling me to be, I would not be here today. Sooner or later, I'm going to come out the dirt. That's why the devil is always trying to remind you of your dirt because the devil feels that if he can keep you buried in the dirt, he can stop you from making it to your destiny. But what you need to do is you need to praise God for the dirt because in the dirt is where you grow your roots. The dirt is where you reach down. The dirt is where you get your nutrients and where you get your, 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 your stability. The dirt is where you get everything that you need in order to be who God is calling you to be. Some of you are stronger tonight than the dirt that you've been through. Some of you can make it through some pain because of the dirt that you've already been through. Some of you can lift your hands and tell God thank you because of the dirt that he's already delivered you from. You can holler, I've been dirty all my life, but I'm so glad that God is in the business of cleaning up. Right? So the sea is small, but its potential is powerful. The Bible teaches you don't uh, be ashamed of small beginnings. Don't, 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 don't be ashamed of being small. Ain't nothing wrong with being small. Just because you start off small don't mean you're going to end up small. And don't you know that the smallest element there is in the world is the most powerful one there is? The atom. The atom is so small you can't even see it. But when they put enough of them bad members together, they'll blow up a whole world. Somebody need to holler, I'm an Adam, baby. I'm an Adam, I'm an Adam. I might be so small you can't see me, but when God get through giving me what I need, I can blow up some stuff and be everything that God promised me I could be. What you grow through, the dirt, prepares you for where you're going to, your destiny. That seed says, put me in the dirt. Because I can't grow on the ground. I got to grow in the ground. Because when I come up out the ground, it's going to be some stuff that try to kill me before I make it to my destiny. And I'm going to need some roots to hold on to. I'm gonna need some foundation to wrap my, to wrap my, to wrap my, my vines around. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna need some depth to make it through some of the trials and tribulations of life. There are some people in here right now. You know you can make, because you know the depths of your relationship with the Lord, and you know what the Lord has already bought you from. And you tell the devil, oh, that's all you got, man. You got to do better than that. I got a relationship with God. He has brought me through some stuff. I've been in a storm. I've been in a rain. I've been in a hurricane. I've been in sickness and in depress. And through it all, God brought me out. You just gonna mess with my money, man? I ain't worried about that money because I've been giving my tithes and my offering, and I know when you. You take whatever you gonna take, he'll open up a window and pull me out a blessing I can't. Don't have room enough to receive. That's all you got. You said this. He was wounded for my transgression. He was bruised for my iniquity. The, the chastisement of my peace is upon him and with his stripes. Oh, somebody need to holler, I'm healed. With his stripes, I am healed. That's all you got. My child going to the club, train up a child in the way he or she should go. That when they go home, they won't depart from it. They coming back to the church. I just pray for them when they're at the club. Lord, put a hedge around them, Lord. Don't let no evil 
will come to them, God. Watch over them, God. While they're traveling in them streets, God. Be their bumper car, God. Take care of them, God. I know you can. I know you will. You got it before you do it. Oh, devil, that's all you got. You need to go mess with some other seed. My seed is rooted. What he can do. I know what he's done for others, he'll do for you. I know that no weapon formed against me shall be able to prosper. I know. Lord, don't let me, don't bury me on the ground, put me in the ground. Because I got to have some stuff that I can reach way down and grab hope to. Because when I start coming up, the devil going to see me and try to tear me down. Oh, but I shall not be moved like a tree planted by the rivers of water. That my, uh, my, my, my leaves going to bring some fruit in due season. I wish I had some due season folk in here that give your neighbor a high five and tell them see it's due it's due season now it's due season now i believe harvest is on the way it's due season now what you grow through the dirt prepares you for what you're going to your destiny hallelujah what god is about to give you is a whole lot more powerful than what you've been through Oh, and when you learn that your latter days are going to be greater than your former days, when you learn that what you're about to get is going to fall out way what you went through, you'll learn how to put your hands together and give God some praise for what you ain't got yet. Tell your neighbor, this ain't even for what I got. This is for what I ain't got yet. Oh, but what I know I read the other day that my former days, my latter days, be better than my former days and in my former days he blessed me in my former days he watched over me in my former days he picked me up and if he did all that in my former day i know i got a reason to praise in my latter days tell your neighbor get ready get ready get ready for your latter days what you grow through the dirt Thank you for me. 
with, 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 with all of my stuff. With yeah. I come from on the wrong side of the track. Lord, thank you for me. In the black sheep in the family, Lord, thank you for me, for the habits that I had that nobody else know about but me and you, Lord. Lord, thank you that what I told you, you ain't told nobody else. Lord, thank you for me. You gotta learn how to tell God thank you for who you are as you're on your way to who you're gonna be. Because if you can't tell God you appreciate who you are, how in the world are you gonna think God is gonna believe that you're gonna appreciate who you're gonna be? So you ought to tell God thank you for who you are in the midst of the mess that you in, in the midst of the dirt that you in, in the midst of all of the pain and suffering that you may have been going through in the midst of all of the feats that you may have had you better learn how to stick out your chest pick up your head look to the hills from which come in your help and say God I thank you for who I am I thank you that you didn't let what I've been through kill me and my mama told me what will kill me all that makes me stronger I wish I had about 15 folk in here that can just tell God thank you for making me who I am. I'm in the dirt. But I'm growing. I feel some stuff sprouting. I'm in the dirt. But I'm better today than I was yesterday. I'm in the dirt. Sister Gary. But thank God I ain't where I used to be. Oh, this seed is growing. Oh, I feel some stuff popping out. Oh, I feel I, I feel some dirt getting out the way. I feel I feel I feel a little, a little rain falling on me. I feel the sun shining on me. I feel I feel oh Lord, I'm stretching and I, and my limbs are a little longer this week than they were last week. I'm in the dirt, but I'm coming out. I wish I wish I wish I wish I wish I had about five folk in the dirt, but you coming out with holler. I'm coming out. This dirty Calvary, I got news for you. We coming out of this dirt. Oh, the Lord going to bless us and we going to come out of this dirt. And we going to come out and we going to look better. We going to feel better. We going to sing better. We going to praise better. We going to love better. We going to walk better. But before we get to better, we got to start doing it right now. Tell your neighbor, we got to start practicing right now. We got to practice love right now. We got to practice praising right now. We got to practice singing right now. We got to practice giving God praise right now. Not for what he's doing, but for what he's gone to. What you grow through, dirt. Susanna, I never would have believed that it's the hard parts of my life that teaches me lessons that the easy part never could teach me. Somebody can testify, I wouldn't know God was real if it wasn't for trouble. I wouldn't know that he's a way out of no way if I had never been in a way out of no way. I wouldn't know that he's a lily of the valley if I had never been in the valley. I'd never know he was food when you're hungry if I'd never been hungry. I wouldn't know that he'll take care of somebody else's children if he never took care of mine. It's the hard places, the dirty places of life that God shows you even in your dirt. My kingdom will still take care of you. Thou kingdom come. Thou will be done in earth as it is in heaven. He says he goes in the ground, the smallest seed planted. But when he comes up, <laughs> when he comes up, he's the largest of all the plants. It grows long branches. And the birds can make nests in its shade. Last point. Then I'm done. Next.
One more, was that it? Did I not put the last one? Well, that was anticlimactic. <laughs> Write this down, the last point. What? Oh, there it is. You grow in the dirt, then you can push through the dirt. You grow in it, and God makes you stronger while you're in it. And then, when you get strong enough, you can push through it. Now, sometimes in your life, sister, you're not able to quite push through it yet. So you say, I got to keep growing in it. I ain't quite able to come out of that yet. I'm not. I'm not there yet, but I'm going to keep growing in it because I know sooner or later I'm going to be able to push through it. I'm going to keep growing in it. I'm not going to get, watch this, satisfied in it. I'm going to grow in it. I'm going to get out of it what I'm supposed to get out of it so I can get out of it. You missed that. I'm going to get out of it what I'm supposed to get out of it so I can get out of it. You still didn't get it. I'm going to get out of it what I can get out of it so I can get out of it. I'm not going to let it defeat me. Because if God planted me there, he didn't plant me there to die. He planted me there to blossom. He planted me there to bloom. He planted me there to bring forth fruit in due season. Tell the devil he didn't plant me here to die. That's why I'm not going nowhere, because I'm where I'm supposed to be. And I don't care how many of you talk to talk bad about me, don't like me, don't like my mama, don't like my daddy, don't like my children, don't like none. I ain't going nowhere. And until you do right by me, I wish I would. Come on, see me. Until you do right by me. Somebody better holler, tell you do right by me. You better tell somebody, tell you do right by me. Be careful how you treat God's children. Because God's got a way of taking care of his children. In a way that man can't take care of them. God's got a way of taking care of his children. You wonder why every time you try to defeat her, she don't do nothing but bounce back, baby. And the last time she bounced back, she bounced back higher than the time before. Because she got a secret weapon that ain't a secret. His name is Jesus.
Oh, I've seen it. Oh, some of us have grown in that thing together. Oh, and our conversation over the years have changed. We used to talk about what we couldn't do, what we couldn't accomplish, why we never make it, why the world was against us. But now we talk about come hell or high water, we're going to be what God said we're going to be. Oh, I've seen God do it too many times. He's been too good not for me to worship him. I've seen God work too many things out in my life. And before you know it, you're on the phone encouraging one another. What started out as a complaint session ended up being an encouragement session. Say, Tommy, you don't remember what the Lord did for you in such and such. You don't remember how the Lord brought you through. I remember how the Lord walked with me. Why? Because I, I went in the kingdom small, but I came out large. My faith is large. My walk is large. My expectation is large. My smile is large. My, my, my belief is large. My love is large. My joy is big. My hope is big. My expectation is big. My praise is big. I love the Lord. He heard my cry and pitied every grow long as I live and trouble rise. I'll hasten unto his throne. I wish I had somebody in here that could give God some praise and show how your praise is me. I went in small. When I came out, B. You wonder why my hands go up on Sunday morning for no reason at all. I got a reason you just don't know. Because God's been good to me. We serve a good God. We serve a God that's in control. We serve a God that has put more in you than you will ever no, but you got to be willing to grow in the dirt. And you got to be willing to grow through the dirt and prepare you for where you're going as far as your destiny. And when you grow in the dirt, you can push through the dirt and be who God is calling you to be. Somebody put your hands together and give God some praise in this place. We are going to receive our offering. Uh, $1 for each business day, $5 uh, as our seed offering, knowing that when we uh, plant the seed, God will grant the increase. Those who may be watching us across various platforms, you can go to our website, www.mcbctheplace.com. You can click on the donate button and give via uh, our PayPal, or you can use our Cash App, dollar sign MCBC Place, or you may mail your gifts to P.O. Box 2672, Baytown, Texas 77522. I'm making a public plea uh, tonight to everybody that may be watching across uh, the airways. We're inviting you to come to church Sunday. Come to church Sunday. Come to church Sunday. Come to church Sunday. We'll be here at 9.30 for Sunday school. We will start our morning worship at 10.45. Come to church Sunday. We miss you. We miss you and we want you to be a part of our service. The Bible teaches us, forsake not thyself of the assembly of one another. Come on, brothers and sisters. We need you to be at church. We need to feel the family, to feel the love, to know that God is control, is in control and has all power in the palm of his hand. So I'm inviting everybody. It's not, it, 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 what's special about it this Sunday? It's Sunday. That's what's special about it. Amen. It's Sunday. Day that the Lord has made the day that we will worship him in spirit and in truth. So we're inviting everybody to come out to church on Sunday. Everybody that is here, I'm asking you to invite somebody to come and be with us on this Sunday as we serve God and give God praise for all of the many blessings that the Lord has bestowed upon our lives. We ready? Lord, we thank you so much for your grace and your mercy. We thank you for these gifts that you have given us. We thank you for an opportunity to give a portion of these gifts back to thee. We ask, oh God, that you would take this offering, that you would bless those that gave, those that had, uh, had it in their hearts but not in their hands. God, we ask that you make a way that on the next time they'll be able to give out of their hands. 
that which they hold in their hearts. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I'm giving y'all 10 minutes back. Amen. 10 minutes back. Amen. 10 minutes back. Everybody on your feet. Everybody on your feet. Amen. Amen. We thank God. We thank God for all of you. We thank God for all of you who uh, are here uh, tonight. Um, thank God for his kindness and his mercy. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for your word. We thank you, oh God, for teaching us a parable through a mustard seed, for letting us know that we may, small, we may start off small, but there's greatness there's potential, there's power inside of us if we just grow through the dirt. We get ready to leave this place, God, but let us not leave you. Go with us, stand by us, lead us, guide us, and protect us. And as always, God, be between us as we're absent one from another. It's in Jesus' name we pray, and we all say it together, amen. You are dismissed. <laughs>